today at uh, 1 uh, p.m. 1 p.m. Hang on just a second. Don't know where my... Hang on, YouTube is showing me all of my channel's things. I don't, I don't know what's going on. The live streams will show up here. Hang on just a second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's one of those weeks, guys. I'm assuming I'm live, so, you know, just uh, be patient with me. And uh, let's see. Apparently they did an update overnight or sometime or another. So let me get the code to verify who I am. And I'll be right with you. Sorry, guys. It has been a week, let me just say. Let's see if that gets me in where I need to go. Okay, my phone is verified. That's awesome. All right, let's see what we got here. Only three, what? Well, I don't know what it's doing. Hang on, guys. I'm feeling dumb. Just a second. I know I'm live, but it has done something weird. Well, oh, let's see. Hang on a minute, guys. I'm going to get going here in just one hot second, I promise. I promise I will get going here in just one second. My my very big bad. Uh, it's wanting a... It's wanting an e a password that I don't have memorized, so just a second. And... The good news is, is when there's knots in the floss, there's knots in the floss, right? I mean, why wouldn't there be knots in the floss? Oh my gosh. I have no idea what is going on here. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I cannot see anything. I can't see anything. I don't know what the heck is going on. So I'm going to just make the card. And if you guys are here, I appreciate it. And um, I'm sorry, I cannot see any comments. So if you've got a question, I'm so sorry. I, I just can't see it because it's only on my phone, not on my computer for whatever reason on the planet. And I don't know what the deal is. I really don't. Uh, let's see. How about if I change that? Try doing that one. Let's try that one. Hang on a second. I might, I may get it licked. Hang on. I may, oh, I think I'm going to get it licked. I'm going to figure it out. You won't best me, YouTube. Boom, chakalaka. Here we go. Phew. I am so sorry, you guys. <laughs> this week has got to be almost over. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Now I can see you. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate that very much. Okay, so here's our card for today. Gosh, it uses, I've gone back a little bit to the annual catalog, to the very pretty pansy patch uh, stamp set and dies. This is no longer bundled, but you can still get both pieces and they are lovely. Look at the pretty flowers you can make. And then my friend Brian King made a card this morning with the layered stripes, which reminded me that I had this cool background, and I decided I would use it. This is in the miniature catalog, the mini catalog, if you will. I know, you could have sang a whole song. Hey, Anne from Northern Ireland, welcome. And I've also used one of my favorite go-tos, the scalloped contours. If you don't have scalloped contours, I promise you, you really want to get it, okay? So, since I only wasted like four minutes of your time, let's go ahead and get going. This will all be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't even need to worry about taking notes or anything like that. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my Stamparatus and the layered stripes. This is a background stamp, so I do like to use a Stamparatus for it. It's just a lot easier for me, and I've got a little bit of repositionable um, adhesive there because it's such a big stamp you can't really put magnets on this on this right what we're going to do today is a little bit of emboss resist the way to do that is um 
the uh, we're going to emboss this layered stripes in clear embossing, and then when we uh, do a little sponging on it, the ink will not stick to the embossed areas. So first I'm going to put a little bit of that Versamark on, use my, two, my uh, embossing buddy. We'll just put a little bit on. Now this is a bigger panel than I need for our piece, so I'm just going to do the embossing, do the sponging, and then cut it out, okay? All right, there we go. And when you do this, just to be sure you've got a good image, you can kind of um, rotate the Stamparatus so that you can see that you've got inked all over it. You probably can't see this online, so I'm sorry about that. We'll take that off, and I am gonna wipe this off. Versamark can be kind of sticky, gooey, gummy, and so I like to get it off at least a little bit right as I use it. Okay. Cut it out, Mary, I know, I know. All right, so let's close that. And while this is still wet, the Versamark stays wet a little longer, but you still don't wanna like go have lunch or anything, you know. I'm going to pick it up and sprinkle my clear embossing powder all over the design. And just kind of double check. I got a little gap of gap right there. Okay, that's good. So close this. Note to self, I just want you to know, be careful turning on your heat tool with your embossing powder container open. Ask me how I know this. Hey guys, appreciate you coming. All right, so we're just going to heat emboss this. Not sure if you can see it, but it takes a second for it to start. It has to get hot enough. And you just wanna hold the uh, tool steady. You don't need to do all that with it. Just hold it steady. And the way you're going to know is when everything turns shiny. Okay? Once it all turns shiny, then that means it's all embossed. That is the magic of embossing. Can you all see it kind of changing up there? You probably can't because of the way the light is. I'm sorry. But it is doing it, I promise. And so we're just going around, moving the heat so that we can get everything melty. Remember too that embossing powder while it's still hot after it's melted it will smear. So you want to be careful to not smear it. Don't check it by rubbing your fingers over it. It's counterproductive I promise. All right let's go here and we'll get the other half done. All right. There's a lot on here. Now you know there's also a hand, uh, handwritten, hand-stamped dots background set in the mini catalog, which is also kind of fun. I debated using it, but I thought this one would be cool with the pansies. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Jenna Marie. Oh, was I wiggling it, Jenna Marie? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The table is wiggly. All right. Now I'm just going to do a quick check that everything is shiny, and it is. There's a not shiny spot right there. Okay. And then, like I said, that needs to cool off for just a second. And while it's doing that, I'll pull out my Pool Party ink pad. And we're going to do a little bit of inking. Ooh. I've got powder, powder. Thank you, you guys. I appreciate you being patient with me. It's uh, one of those weeks. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do a little bit off, off of here. Now my ink pad is not real juicy, so it's, prob it's not as likely to give me big blobs, but it's always good to have that habit pattern where you start off of, the, off of your cardstock, because it's really hard to unblobify it, I can assure you of that. Okay, and we're not even gonna do the whole thing. I just want some on there. Okay, it's just a suggestion of color. All right, can you see what I've done there? And then if I put this away, we're going to just wipe over that to get any ink that might be on the embossed sections off. 
and you can kind of see that the white is shining through. Now, it's not as apparent and in your face with this very light background color, but if I had colored that darkly, you would have some really, really distinct white stripes there, okay? So now, offline, behind me, I'm going to use the uh, Scallop Contours die, and I'm going to cut this out, okay? So just one second, and I will be turning, be returning. I will be returning, I promise. Of course, I've been, you know, wrong on all the tech today, so one never knows. I might just disappear. All right, here we go. And I got a little bit of... Must be time for a new cutting pad, because I'm getting stuff on it. Okay, so this is essentially what I'm going to build to now because all it's going to do is go on a basic white um, cardstock base, okay? So we've done a little bit of cutting, and by we, I mean me. We have made, I am going to be making, I don't know where this we came from, I do not have a frog in my pocket. All right, so we're making Orchid Oasis pansies and Mossy Meadow and Old Olive leaves. And I've got a little bit of starry sky for those little middle pieces that look like little people with, um, you know, eyes and some flower centers as well. Now, I'm just going to say straight up, if I put any pansies on upside down, just don't tell me, pretend I did it on purpose. Okay. Just pretend I did it on purpose. So let's go ahead. We're going to do some liquid glueifying here, and I'm going to put these little accent doohickeys on their petals. And we're just going to use our tweezers and some liquid glue. <laughs> I do need to sing. I need to come up with something to sing, I guess. I don't know. If I was Julie Andrews, it would be probably time for a whiskers and kittens. But I'm not. I'm not gonna. T I'm not gonna lie. Right at this moment in time, I'm not really feeling the songs coming. So, I don't know. By the time we get done, hopefully, the power of creativity and creating and being with you guys will do its job, and I will spontaneously break into song, and you just will not know what it is I'm going to sing. Maybe all I'm going to sing is what I'm saying to you. I don't know. So we're just using a little liquid glue. You don't need a ton, but you kind of want to get it where the little ends are and the little edges are so that it will stick. You could also do this in a con contrasting color. You know, look up pansies and go wild. I am, uh, this is a spring card for a spring challenge. And I'm using the pansies because I don't have a violas set. My little violas are coming up nice. I guess I knew when I bought them last year that they were perennials. I tried, I thought I tried really hard to only buy perennials. I know annuals, uh, marigolds are my big annual that I use because they're so good in my garden and they're so stinking generous, right? I mean, they just go crazy and they go crazy all summer and long into the fall here in Georgia. And and some of them even come back. They kind of like self-seed themselves, which is kind of cool. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Thank you, Jenna Marie. That was the that was the suggestion I needed. Even if I didn't know I needed it, that was a good suggestion. All right, so we've got those on. That's just tone on tone. And now I'm going to adhere these little guys in place. These are the starry sky doohickeys. I don't know what they're called, but they're doohickeys. We're going to put those like that in the middle. All right. And then I did cut out the little centers, these little center doohickeys right here, from some Mango Melody. And yes, Amy, I know it's orange, but... It's it's a necessary color for this, I think. I'm I'm I love it. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll do one more. Their little faces, yes, their little faces. 
Okay. Now, those guys can sit quietly. When I made the leaves, what I did is there's actually four leaf dies in the die set, okay? So you got two solids, one large and one small, and then two detailed, also one large and one small. And so what I did is I just cut one of each from Old Olive and Mossy Meadow, and then I'm just mixing and matching them, okay? So I'll have a bunch of leaves uh, with a combination of Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. I love these detailed dyes. They're just so pretty. This makes the best leaves. I really love the leaves on here. The good news is, is this is the most tedious part for you to watch. So there we go. <laughs> hey, Faith. Appreciate you coming. Alrighty. One more. Unamas. 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 It, it, okay, so this is kind of funny. We have a kitty that comes to our barn and eats, or we put food out for him, right? And he's a very lovely, big kitty. He's gray, striped, um, and he's just very pretty. And he's all fluffy, and he's very healthy looking, but he won't let us touch him. So he's he's either feral or well-established as a stray. Um, but a little while ago, our ring alarm thing that's kind of hooked up to the neighborhood, who everybody, anybody who has ring alarms, somebody posted juvenile cougar, mountain lion seen in my neighbor's backyard and they showed two pictures and I'm like, I have never seen a gray tabby striped cougar <laughs> in my life. So I'm like, that looks just like our kitty. So I'm thinking, okay, somebody needs to get Googling mountain lions because I really, really don't think that is. I don't know. I don't know how to put them on right side up, Amy. I don't know anymore what right side up is. I just don't know. And they're not going to be, I can already tell, because I think you're supposed to put the face. Oh, well, this one is, this one is, oh, they're both maybe right side. I don't know. Good Lord. It doesn't matter. It's art. It's art. But yes, yes, that's a true thing. Okay, so now I'm just going to take and adhere these leaves in a certainly perfectly beautiful way, but I'm not, I don't want the same kind next to each other. Gosh, that would be terrible if I did that. Okay, and then we're gonna put that one there, and then we'll have one down here. So let's go ahead and use a little liquid glue to put these on, a juvenile cougar. Yes, right around the corner from us. He probably came from the truck stop. I don't know, I was like, Y'all, that is a domestic cat. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think cougars are even like born looking like gray tabby cats. I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm I'm not like Steve Irwin or anything, but I'm pretty sure that was a domestic cat. <laughs> okay, people. <laughs> it did make me laugh. And this week I needed some laugh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Alrighty, and then I'm going to adhere these little guys. This is all with liquid glue, and we're going to get some, uh, we'll get some dimensionals here in play. For those of you who are worried that perhaps I have lost my, my dimensional mojo, no, I haven't. It's coming. It's coming. We're just kind of piling these up, so it's not like we're really trying to make real flowers, okay? I'm just, that's my caveat. These are not necessarily real flowers. <laughs> All right, and then this guy's going to go here. And this guy I'm turning upside down. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. All right, now remember, he can kind of go off the bottom if he wants because he's going to be on the front of our card front like that. So it's not like he's going to interfere with anything. So while that sets, let's go ahead and get... Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's interesting. People are like spring loaded to want there to be terribly vicious wild. And in fact, they even put the, you know, these are dangerous animals and be sure to call animal control if you see them. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> if I happen to see a juvenile, <laughs> I will do that. All right. I'm going to stamp the sentiment from Pansy Patch in Starry Sky on about a half an inch wide piece of basic white. We're going to try to get it straight. I always amaze myself when I have a photopolymer stamp and I can't get it straight. Like, that one isn't really straight. See? See? What is up with that? 
Thank goodness there's two sides. That's the whole point of there being two sides. All right, I'm going to shut up a minute, and I'm going to get this better. That is going to be better. That is either going to be better or just we're going to use it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use it. Okay. So then I'm going to cut this off, and you can just snip it like that, or you can use your... Um, I'm going to get a little snugger to it. How about that? Or you can use your paper trimmer, whichever. I just kind of like there to be about the same on both sides of the sentiment. Okay. And then I have a half an inch piece of old olive from the Regals DSP. And I'm going to make it about the same length, but a little longer. So not the same length, but a little longer. And just cut a angled end in it like that. Okay. And so it's going to go like so. And we'll just do, you know what, let me get my um, card base. When you're doing these things like so, um, you kind of want to measure with your card base. So let's go ahead and make that. This is my eight and a half by, or five and a half by eight and a half piece, and I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter. And this is thick basic white. Um, just remember when you're making a card base and it doesn't have the tons of layers that I normally have, I mean, this is really very few layers in the big scheme of things, using the thick cardstock is always a good idea. Okay, so it's gonna go on like this, and I want to be able to let my sentiment overlap off of the end. Okay, so it's gonna go right about there, and we'll cut that just like Okay, so then I discovered, I didn't discover it. I knew this, I was born knowing this. No, I, not really. If you adhere these two strips together, like that, to begin with, then you can just put, yeah, I mean, now see, coyotes in, even in town in New Mexico m makes more sense to me than here. We have coyotes here as well, but we've lived here since 2002 and never seen anything approximating, no scat, no nothing that would approximate, approximate a, a mountain lion. I, it just would be very, very odd, I think. So I'm, I'm going with... It wasn't a mountain lion because I need it to not be a mountain lion this week. You know what I'm saying? Just This would just not be a great week for this to be a mountain lion. Oh, before I do that, let me do my bow. I almost put that on without the bow, and you never want to leave your bow off. So this is just a piece of silver trim. And this is from the um, Simply Elegant Trim pack, which is in the annual catalog. And I'm just tying a simple, simple bow, which may, begs the question, why is she having such a hard time with it if it is so simple? Hmm. Things that make you say, hmm. Okay, so this little guy is going to go right here, and I'm going to use a glue dot. I did actually use a little dabble of, um, a dab of liquid glue on my sample. And you can certainly do that. And it does make it a little less standy-uppy, which is code for thick. But it also takes a minute to dry. And so just for the sake of this, we're going to do like so. And I like when we have this kind of a, of a deal going on. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to the card front right now. Ooh, hanging it out, hanging it out. This means that I'm likely to adhere the inner liner in upside down. You know, I gave a card to my husband once that, <laughs> that I had done that because I was annoyed with myself and I didn't want to just get rid of it and I couldn't fix it. It was too, it wasn't, it wasn't fixing very good. So I said, okay, he won't notice. I'm not, to this day, I'm not sure if he noticed. He probably did, but he was kind and didn't say anything. Like, Mayor, you know that you're, your inside and your outside are opposite sides, just like, you know, one's up and one's down. Okay, so let's go ahead. That's popped on with some dimensionals. That way I can uh, make sure that this is all correct. So it's going to go right about there, just like that. 
So when you're trying to adhere over a bow, remember my tip of putting your dimensionals on the card stock instead of on the, the sentiment itself. And we're gonna get one right, I may have to, st I'll stick it on afterwards. And because I am going over a bow, I'm gonna use double dimensionals. I think just down here. You kind of have to play it, guys. You have to think about what your paper is doing. And I can tell that it's going to be about the right thickness there without a second one. Can you see what I'm looking at? So I've got doubles here, and it's about the same height as my, as my bow knot is. So I think that's going to work. And we're going to adhere it like so. Let's go with trying to get a little straight, Mary. How about a little straight, Mary? Good. Little straight. Very good. It is exactly that, a little straight. All right, so to finish off, I'm gonna put a couple of rhinestones. Hi, Linda, appreciate you coming. Just a few rhinestones. There's a rhinestone cowboy. Dun, dun. That was one of my favorite movies ever. I don't particularly care for Jane Fonda, but, you know, Robert Redford and a really nice looking quarter horse. So it was a good movie. I, I mean, you know, it wasn't a great movie, but it was a good movie. And if you like horses and Robert Redford, done. All right, so there's our front. Let's go ahead and get the innards in there. And let's see, where is my cardstock? Here we go. I've just got a piece of basic white. And let's see, I'll get my, I'm going to be all efficient and stuff. Okay, so we're going to stamp a pansy. I'm going to use the larger pansy flower, and this is the solid piece. So we're stamping him in Orchid Oasis on the envelope and on the inner liner. Okay, and then we'll put him aside so we don't get in a mess. Don't get in a ink catastrophe. No. Oh, I don't need to get rid of him anyway. I need him back. And then I'm going tone on tone. Okay. So this is the detailed version of that same flower. So it's a two-step stamp, and I'm just going right over the top, again in Orchid Oasis. Let me line that up a little better. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to stamp the little um, innards in Mango Melody. You knew the rhinestone song was coming, see? I'm so predictable. So I've got this little image to stamp his little face, like so. And we'll do that on the inside as well. Or on the, this is the envelope. Okay. And then, we'll keep him out because we're going to need him in just a second. Let's see, where did you go, Starry Sky? Here's Starry Sky, and we're going to use him for the face. So his little face will be Starry Sky. Oop, that's very, very much over inked. Let's fix that before we have something we don't like. There we go. Hmm, is that the right way? Is that right? Yeah, okay. All right, so we have the starry sky middle face. Okay, and then to finish up, I'll use the little tiny dot, little tiny flower center dot, right in the center of the flower, which seems to make sense since it's the tiny flower center dot. All right, there we go. And that's the envelope, so we'll set him aside for just a second. And now I am gonna close up my ink pads. I've got ink everywhere and it is destined, destined I say, destined. Oh yes, the mountain lions out west are, definitely a thing where my mom lives in particular, they lose, people let their dogs out and their kitties out, and then they're surprised when the mountain lions get them, right? Okay, I'm kind of going out of order here, but I grabbed that envelope, so let's go ahead and put a piece of the old olive DSP on the flap. All we're doing now is just assemblizing. We're done stamping, we're done die cutting. 
we're just putting it all together. All right, like so. I'm gonna be singing that song all day now. Mm-hmm. Great mare, great mare. All right, and then this little inner liner is gonna go. That. I. <laughs> It's one of those days. Here we go. Here's the inner liner. It's going to go on a starry sky mat. All right. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. All right. And then we'll put it inside our card base. And we're going to be done. All right, these are a few of my favorite things. You're welcome, Amy. I knew you wanted a little bit of a repertoire from The Sound of Music. I know how you feel about that. It's your favorite musical ever, ever. All right, and there we go. So, Pansy Patch from the annual catalog. It's easy to lose track of the beautiful things in the annual catalog, but you know it's coming to an end on the 1st of May. So um, if there are things that you don't have from there, I don't know what's retiring. I will know what's retiring on the 29th. And um, as soon as I'm able to share that with you, I certainly will. But anything in the annual catalog, anything in the mini catalog is certainly on the chopping block, if you will. All right, I have no idea what's carrying over. I will learn at the same time you do. Also, don't forget the in colors, 21, 23. Those are all going away almost certainly. All right, so be sure to get your ink pads, your ink refills, and your cardstock, and any markers associated with them so that you don't miss out on your favorite in colors. Let's have a moment of silence for them because they're awesome. Okay, appreciate you guys, appreciate your patience, and I will hopefully see you on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your week, y'all. Bye-bye.